This is Chris, the Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. Today I got a project in front of me I'm gonna be doing today and it's an iron fence and it's got a lot of rust on it. I'm gonna talk about some products I'm gonna be using to help resolve this rust problem. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to do an iron fence so it will last a whole long time. So if you wanna see how I get this fence looking brand new again, stay tuned for this video. All right, so we're out here working on this fence. I've already started. I'm gonna be using a couple of products. I'm gonna be using um, oil-based Rust-Oleum. And as much as I don't like oil-based products, I'm gonna be using it in this case because it's gonna be a lot more corrosion resistant. We got a lot of rust on this fence. It's gonna give me better adhesion and it's more chip resistant and it's great for high traffic areas. This is a fence, a high traffic area, and it's gonna need something extremely durable. It's also getting hit by sprinklers, which is um, on a daily basis, which is causing a lot of the rust problem. So I'm using this industrial coating from Rust-Oleum, great product, and rust inhibitive primer, and then a top coat. So I'm just going along, I'm gonna be sanding first, and then I'm gonna be uh, wire brushing. So sanding and wire brushing, trying to get off any excess and loose rush. We're gonna be wiping this thing down after that. And then I'm gonna be going around and using the primer. I'm gonna be rolling the primer on, on troublesome areas. And one of the great things about the Rust-Oleum, it can go on bare metal. It can go right over rust also. If you got excessive rust, you definitely need to remove the excessive rust. I'm using a primer right here. This is a high performance rusty metal primer so it can go right over the top of rust but you really need to help get some of that rust off the loose stuff and then um and then you can prime from there i'm going to be rolling it on to help with um, bite adhesion and um, penetration so i'm going to be rolling it on just with a weenie roller uh, we got to protect the ground so we got to be um, putting cardboard shields and stuff underneath this fence because i don't want to get any overspray. we're going to be spraying the um, fence uh, the, all the top coat with an hvlp sprayer so um, we'll just come right along and we're going to be working on this and you can see um, some tips and tricks and i'll show you what i'm doing as i go and talk about it as i go any of the tools that we're using or a lot of the tools we're using in our videos are down in the video description below if you want to get more information about those tools or products don't forget if you enjoy our videos hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell that way you get notified every time i come out with a new video it's free simple easy to do it doesn't cost you anything just click click if you hit the subscribe button and not the notification bell it's not gonna do you or me any good let's get on with the fence right some of the tools and products I'm gonna be using on this fence once again I'm using oil-based uh, industrial rust-oleum. I'm using a rusty primer um, for the um, priming. I don't have to prime the entire fence, but then I'm gonna be um, top coating it with a gloss black. I've got just a simple wire brush. I've got a few really rusty spots I'm gonna be wire brushing. I'm using an Ekasan 3x4 sander with foam sanding pads, just the 3x4 uh, sanding pads, and these are a medium grit sanding pad right here so this makes the sanding process pretty fast and easy i'll be using um i'll be using just a little weenie roller just to do the priming right here and then i'll use another weenie roller after we spray the top coat to do any touch-ups with a bucket a two gallon bucket i've got a um an apollo precision five uh um, HVLP sprayer that I'm going to be using with a 77 atomizer gun right here to do the spraying and one reason why I like using an HVLP sprayer when doing um, fences like this versus a um, airless sprayer is significantly less overspray on this fence this entire fence I'd probably use you know, one gallon, maybe two gallons with an airless sprayer, I'd probably use seven gallons because of the amount of overspray that it causes. And then obviously protecting for overspray. An HVLP sprayer, you can dial it in very small and spray all these little pickets um, and, or spindles with very minimal overspray. And that's really important with an oil-based product also. Uh, got cardboard shields to stuff underneath my, um, underneath my my um, fence right here. It's harder to get drop cloths. It's a lot easier to get cardboard shields, slide them under the, there, and then set your drop cloths around those. I've got um, some 
tape. I'll be using just frog tape production tape and frog tape blue to do any masking if I need any masking. There's a few places over here I got to do a little bit of masking. So I'll be using nine inch paper. Uh, if I got any type of um, uh, grease or oil or anything on my fence, I'm going to be using crud cutters uh, uh, degreaser. I like this as a degreaser cleaner or even a deglosser too. So crud cutter right here. I got some of that with me and that's about it when it comes to the tools and accessories. So I've already got this sanded already. It took me about uh, 20 minutes to sand that. I'm just continuing right along. going to do the sanding and then we're going to be doing some spot priming and then we'll start the spraying. One of the big challenges with a fence like this um, and something you really are not going to be able to do in some cases here is the bottom of this railing right here paint in the bottom to protect that also one thing you can't see down there some places it's touching the ground and you can't get underneath there very uh, um unideal how they did this fence built it that low and built it right over the top of the grass which is not ideal either but we just got to deal with that situation um, unfortunately so We'll just do the best we can. In some cases, we'll be able to stick a weenie roller under there and roll down there. We do got some areas right here where the water has already uh, eaten through the um, fence right here because of rust. So um, you can see now I've got cardboard shields down along here. I can do any spot priming now. I wouldn't want to do any spraying, but I, now it's good and protected to do spot priming. And I will lay some drop cloths down on the opposite side. Just some spots down here on the bottom on these weld joints that you know got a little bit of rust. It's kind of interesting because you know Rust Oleum they've got you know two different primers. One's for extremely rusty metal and one's for slightly rusty metal. And I'm not quite sure. Um, what is extremely rusty and what is, you know, slightly rusty. I would consider this probably slightly rusty. Um, and so the top coat can actually be painted over um, bare metal or um, very slightly rusty metal that's been clean. So, um, but I'm just as a precaution, I'm gonna be priming this over this rust just to make sure I'm getting a really good good bond to it but down here on the bottom you know there's um, these weld joints got just a little bit more rust than the other parts see this is down here where the the fence is down actually into the dirt so I'm not just a really kind of a bad case scenario but um, We'll do the best we can to work around that. So I've got everything ready to go. Got a rag with some crud cutter. I'll be just cleaning it and degreasing it. So the trees kind of drip some type of sap or something on here. So I'm just going to be cleaning that off, sanding it off, and also going to just clean it off too. So. a lot of different things crud cutter is good for and we use it you say we use crud cutter to glosser crud cutter cleaner this is really good for um, getting overspray off of something if you've got overspray on something you didn't want it to be on you'd use crud cutter to get it off pretty quick and easy This is one of these things, these iron fences, you know, the, the proper prep work and the proper products, you know, are going to make this thing last a lot longer um, than, you know, for the customer. It's going to be this rust oleum oil-based industrial coating is going to make, uh, once again, the fence more corrosion resistant. It's going to resist rust a lot better in this environment. Oh, got to do all the proper steps to, you know, promote really good adhesion on this thing. Another thing is, is 
the grass mowers and edgers um, uh, hit the fence, you know, which is, um, so having something that's <clears throat> more chip resistant, scratch resistant is good in this situation where the mowers are gonna be, you know, getting close to the fence, hitting the fence, probably gonna be having some um, weed eaters hitting the fence too, weed eating the fence. All right, that section's good to go for priming and painting now. We're gonna start sanding uh, the next section here. So I'm just um, sanding, cruising along sanding here with my three by four sander and just using medium sanding sponges right here. And yeah, I'm just changing them. You can just tell, feel them when, when they start to sand slower or um, the grit starts to wear out. You'll notice it because they're not as aggressive and stuff and then just change them out. They're just easy to switch out. I just got a pouch full of them right here and just switching them out you know, as I go, as they're wearing out. And they, you know, one of these sanding pads is lasting, you know, um, I'm changing them out about every three, about every three um, um, sections of fence. So this is a section of fence right here that, you know, weed eater is gonna be hitting you know, all the time. And this is where it's really important to have an industrial type coating like this oil-based Rust-Oleum, which is more durable and um, great for high traffic areas like this. And, you know, because it's apparent that a weed eater, you know, with um, like a nylon filament is gonna be hitting this thing all the time. When it comes to sanding too, it's good to, you'll be a lot f faster, more efficient if you, just come up with a system and my system is I'm doing the top rail first, then I'm just doing each spigot or, or spindle at a time. And I'm going up one side and down the other side and the foam pad, as I go up one side, it hits the front too. And then as I'm going, I'll hit the bottom rail uh, before I move again. So I'm going up one side, down the other side, up one side, down the other side hit the bottom rail. And then move on. And you could, um, it's interesting because the grass right here is stuck on there. You can't even wipe it off because the weed eater and stuff and the sander knocks that off really fast. You could try to power wash it off and it would take you a long time to power wash every one of these spindles. So now you can um, do this just with, hand, with sponges. Like you can actually just hand do each one of these this way. You know, you don't have to have a sand uh, power sander or like this orbital sander, but I think it's gonna save you. It's probably about two to three times faster, you know, with uh, um, an electric sander than trying to do it by hand. So I got my uh, Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Now I'm gonna load up my bucket, full that, and start doing some spot priming. Now most of this stuff doesn't need to be primed. I'm just priming hitting it all, just spot priming it, just, you know, as an added measure, just to help my top coat bond better and stuff since I got the primer out. But there's few spots here that are pretty heavily rusted. I'm hitting those. There's one of them right here. It's actually rusted all the way through the fence. But spindles all look pretty good. Um, most of them don't need to be primed. Primer dries um, specs on it is one to three hours. It's dry. If you're going to uh, put another coat, it 
says 24 hours. It's amazing because it's actually, um, I just put it on, it's already dry in some areas. Like we're talking like minutes later, it's already dry. Just such a oil-based coating, so it's really thin. Definitely don't need to put it on really heavier to run. This brush rolling it, you know, just helps adhesion penetration of the product. Being as thin as it is too, you gotta say so you gotta not don't put on too much. It splatters really bad, so um, just be careful. Make sure you have drop cloths because it is really thin. It's not bad. It's just you just got to be aware of what you're using, the product you're using. A little bit goes a whole long ways too. So. So you know, probably this fence, whole entire fence will probably just take a gallon, maybe two gallons at most. This is the section that's gonna be kind of difficult because it's like built down into the ground, which is kind of interesting. Not the most ideal situation for any fence, let alone an iron fence. It's just gonna cause it to rust. You can't paint underneath the bottom, which is ideal if you can. So this concrete, they just put a new sidewalk in and this is really unfortunate because these concrete guys um, didn't put any drop cloths, didn't cover this, just shot concrete all over and I guess they don't feel like it's their problem and it's stuck all over this fence. So I'm trying to get it off. It went in my sander. It was ruining my sanding pads because it's big chunks of concrete and so my Linvite scraper is actually scraping it off and working. It'll probably definitely gonna ruin my scraper blade but it's worth it to try to get it off because it just looks so bad. I thought I was gonna just have to paint over it and but it's um I put some primer over and it just looked terrible. So this is actually working, which is gonna look a lot better. All right, so I just started spraying. I got my uh, first two panels sprayed. We started spraying, I'm using a semi-gloss, the Rust-Oleum Industrial Coating. And just to give you some you know, pointers when it comes to spraying, one thing I'm really happy with is it's spraying without having to thin it. And that's a great thing, because thinning just adds you know, more time you know, to um, the setup process and stuff. I, I uh, took a risk 
put it in there without thinning it. It says you can thin it up to one and a half times. And um, being an oil-based product, this is something interesting. Um, don't use uh, mineral spirits or paint thinner. It says to use acetone. So if you wanted to increase the dry time or decrease the dry time, you know that would be um, a possibility too by adding acetone to help it dry faster. But um, started spraying without thinning. Great. I'm using the. Um, the um, Apollo Atomizer 7700 gun using the HS um, cap and the 1.3 needle size HSB cap and that's working um, perfectly without uh, thinning it. I've got it dialed all the way down to a circular pattern and one of the things about that is it slows down the spray-in process. It's a very small pattern. I've got the material dialed down significantly, but we got a slight breeze around here. It's an oil-based product, and one thing you don't want is um, overspray and overspray um, problems, claims, liabilities. And um, one thing, by dialing it down like this, you can significantly control overspray. I've only got overspray falling out from the fence, you know, about a foot. I got drop cloths down. Um, it's still drying, you know, significantly fast. Overspray is not an issue by using um, the HVLP sprayer. If you're using a, an airless sprayer, that's going to be a big problem. Another thing is um, in the sun, it's drying extremely fast. If you don't want any um, risk of any type of flashing, on your fence, this is a semi-gloss. If you're going to like a high gloss, you could risk getting flashing. Um, spray in the morning when it's nice and cool. Uh, today's about 85 degrees in the sun. The fence is gonna be extremely hot. Um, do it in the morning. Um, I got most of this is all shaded, so I've got protection of the shade. Um, but I even sprayed this out in the sun here, and it's not flashing. It looks great. So um, it's cruising right along, just spraying it. Um, I got my pressure because I didn't thin it out. I on the um, Apollo, the um, Precision 5, the LE model. That's the one I use and prefer. I've got it um, dialed all the way up to full pressure. I can even dial down the pressure now if I'm if I'm really concerned about overspray, dial it down to um, drop down the pressure. But I'm not getting very much fallout, you know, um, but just about a foot or two on my drop cloth, so I'm not concerned about it. But I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more, my material and my pressure as I cruise along down here. But that's just something you're gonna have to um, mess around with yourself. So I'm um, gonna continue spraying. And when it comes to the whole spraying thing too, is um, you know, try to develop like with the sanding, try to develop a system. What I like doing is I like doing all my spindles first and then I'm gonna do the top rail, and then I'm gonna do the bottom rail, because if you do your top rail and you have any fallout onto your bottom rail, um, you could get some flashing on it. So do, do kind of just work from top down after you do your spindles. If you do your top rail first and then do um, your spindles, uh, you could get flashing up onto your um, up onto your top rail, and you want that to be really smooth because people people are going to be putting their hands on that. But I chose to use a semi gloss instead of a gloss. I just like that look a lot better than a high gloss. But it's looking good. We're cruising right along. So um, hey, if you got any questions or comments, you know, when it comes to doing an iron fence like this or just doing fences in general. You'll leave them down in the comments section below. I do have a video I just put out here recently on um, staining wooden fences. So if you, wooden fences and decks, if you wanna see that, check it out. We'll leave it at the end of the video, um, a link to that, those videos. So um, let's get on with doing some more staining here. Not staining, painting a fence, an iron fence. All right, so a few little tips and tricks when it comes to the spraying. So I was spraying um, the iron fence. I was using the Apollo Precision 5 HVLP sprayer. I had the pressure. I ended up going with 7 point or 6.7 PSI on the sprayer. So it set, I got a digital readout right there. I was using um, an HB, an HSB cap, 1.3 needle. I didn't have to thin out the product, which was great. 
and I was just working on spraying and I would spray all the spindles one side, then I would spray the top and bottom um, faces of that side. I'd go to the opposite side, finish spraying the spindles, then I'd spray the top and finish spraying the bottom. And I just came up with a pattern and um, to make it you know, quick and efficient for me. And I was um, spraying and, um, and it actually worked out pretty good that way. All right, we're out here day two working on our iron fence. And uh, you know, I haven't done a lot of fences over the years and I haven't used a lot of oil-based products. And I, I, once I started doing this fence, I realized why I don't like oil-based products and they're just messy, get on everything, get on your drop cloths, get on your skin, hard to get off. Uh, the cleaning, uh, just getting it off your skin is very difficult. But I learned a couple things that I'm gonna share with you right here about painting iron fences that'll probably make the process a lot simpler for you. At the end of the day, we were using drop cloths to make sure we didn't get oversprayed. The overspray is carrying you know, only about uh, two feet away from our fence because it got the pressure dialed down really low on the sprayer. But um, overspray was getting on the drop cloth so when we folded up the drop cloths, took them back, they're going to stay tacky for quite some time. You don't want to drag those things, you know, into a house the next day. You want those things to dry out. So we had to let them set out to dry out for about two days. What I learned, I'm not going to use drop cloths this time. I'm just going to roll out four by paper right here. So it's four foot wide. I'm going to roll this out along the um, concrete and sidewalk. That way I can just roll that stuff up, throw it away. I don't have to worry about my drop cloths getting all black from overspray. And I don't have to worry about um, allowing them to dry out. They also get really rough from the oil base overspray. And um, you know, that's not a good characteristic of your drop cloth. So four by paper, this is rosin paper. I'm gonna be using, you can use rosin paper or just four by construction paper, something that's inexpensive. You can just roll up and throw away. I know it's an added cost to the job, but it's well worth not getting overspray all over your drop cloth. Another thing I learned is I didn't wear a monkey suit and I've got, over, um, oil-based paint on my my um, expensive pants. So my pants cost about you know $80, 70 to $80. I don't like getting paint on my pants. So wear a monkey suit. I learned at the end of the day, I had overspray on my arms. I had it um, paint on my pants, which I didn't like, and it doesn't come off now because it is oil-based. I scrubbed them when I got back. I'm just gonna take like a $7 monkey suit. I'm gonna wear a monkey suit. I can just pull that thing off and then I won't have overspray that I have to scrub off in the shower or use uh, mineral spirits or acetone chemicals to wipe it off my skin because it doesn't just come off with soap and water. So get yourself one of these throwaway monkey suits and to the end of the day, just pull it off and throw it in the trash and it's gonna save your pants from looking um, dirty and dingy, especially when they're expensive pants. I get a lot of people asking me, you know, what pants I wear. These are Thrive workwear pants. And like I said, they cost somewhere between $70, $80, I think. I'm not sure I um, buy them online. Anywhere is thriveworkwear.com. So two things I learned right there, sharing with you um, to make the uh, process easier. We're gonna get going a uh, second day doing this iron fence with our HVLP sprayer, uh, low pressure, high volume, low pressure. I'm running it at full pressure, which is about 6.9, I believe, but we'll give you um, that statistic uh, once we get going and it'll come across the screen what pressure we're using. All right, on with the spraying. So I'm just cruising right along spraying the fence here and I did change some things wearing a monkey suit, a spray suit and also putting paper down instead of drop cloths. I also came, with, came up with a different technique spraying the fence that's a little faster and more efficient and kind of just doing the same thing I would do when I would spray a door jam or a window trim and instead of just releasing the trigger all the time I'm just starting and stopping and just doing this u-shape motion and it hits the uh, each picket it hits one side of the picket on the u-shape motion and then i'm just cruising around cruising along doing this um, from top to bottom and back up again just one sweeping stroke and i only have to release the trigger one time 
So it saves my fingers from releasing the trigger and it's also hitting the top and bottom and giving me a more consistent finish and um, less chance of having light spots. So just something, um, a little technique I picked up uh, while doing this fence itself and I'll just adopt that and use it on future fences. And once again, it's kind of just like adopting some of the same techniques like spraying a door jam. You'll start from top, coming down, swing it over the top of the door jam. That way you don't have overlaps and um, possibility of you know, runs and stuff like that on um, your door jam, but also the same with the fence. So just watch the technique and see um, if it's something that you might want to give a try on your next iron fence. All right, there you have it. A complete guide about how I go about painting a wrought iron fence and one that does have quite a bit of rust and that is getting hit by sprinklers and um, does get a lot of traffic and stuff. I used Rust-Oleum products on this fence so it'll last a whole long time. I did change things. This was a multi-day project. So from day one to even the next day, I um, did change some things on that fence. What I would do, you know, including wearing monkey suits and um, how I actually covered and dropped the area. Hopefully you picked up some of those pointers. So doing a wrought iron fence is gonna be a little bit better experience for you than it was for me, like on my first day. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget, got questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we come out with a new video. It's free and easy to do. Out.